Hello, everybody out there in YouTube land. This is Good Times for All, or Zachary Zabala, if you prefer. In this video, we will be explaining how incoherent electrostatic acceleration creates the downward vector. Gravitation, a word which many do not comprehend, is a theory that was created to explain the paths of the luminaries above and what keeps them in orbit around other bodies including our Earth. It has been known and taught in college-level physics courses that the electric forces that hold the Earth together are 26 times stronger than the gravitational forces that are supposedly here on Earth. I will now show you a short video of former MIT physics professor Walter Lewin explain this quite clearly. So what holds our world together? Well, on the nuclear scale, 10 to the minus 12 centimeters, very important are the nuclear forces. On an atomic scale, up to thousands of kilometers, it's really electric forces that hold our world together. But on a much larger scale, planets and stars and the galaxy, it is gravity that holds our world together. And now you may say, ah, that's very inconsistent with what you just told us, because didn't you tell us that D cancels if you compare gravity with electricity? Yes, but keep in mind that most objects in the universe have only a very small amount of charge per unit mass. The Earth and Mars have each a charge of about 400,000 coulombs. The gravitational force between them is therefore about 17 orders of magnitude larger than the electric force. So even though our immediate surroundings are dominated by electric forces, including your own body for that matter, the behavior of the universe on a large scale is dictated by gravity. As you heard, the professor state Gravity does not take place until we start talking about a moon orbiting a planet, the planet orbiting a sun, or stars orbiting the center of their galaxies. I fully agree that this is a theoretical concept that is unproven still today, and find it odd that they need ideas such as dark matter to make up over 90% of their model to explain how it is possible. Having said this, I completely understand people's reluctancy to use gravity in any kind of discussion about the place we live. At the same time, most people who have never been educated on the subject correctly believe that the force holding things in orbit and the force making things fall are one and the same, in which lies the problem. It is hard to explain how this place works when most do not know how the laws of electricity control the world around us. I will try in this video to explain how incoherent electrostatic acceleration works while using examples that can be recreated by anyone. To start out, we will take a look at Earth's electrostatic field. This is important because we, along with all the matter, in this known realm are inside of an electrostatic field. The Earth itself has a measurable negative charge compared to the air above it all across the plane. As soon as you leave the surface, there is a positive charge in the air around you that grows in electrostatic potential the further you go up towards the sky. It is a steady, gradual rise in potential, which tells us, according to the laws of electricity, that we are between two Gaussian surfaces. A Gaussian surface is simply a surface that encloses or distributes a charge. If there were only one surface, the rate at which the positive potential grew would be different. Knowing that we are between two Gaussian surfaces. We can also know that certain phenomena will take place in all matter within the electric field or area between the two surfaces. 
For this topic, we will first look at polarization through electrostatic induction. Electrostatic induction is a phenomenon where the positive and negative static charges on matter are slightly separated or polarized due to the electrostatic charge of its surrounding area. If one set of the object's surroundings is positive and the other negative, the negative charge on the object will be attracted to the positive area around it, while the positive charge on the object will be attracted to the negative area on the opposite side. So here on Earth, the positive charge on our bodies is always attracted down towards the Earth, and the negative will be attracted to the air above. This phenomena creates a slight force in that downward vector because as soon as we leave the ground, we start becoming positively charged by the air around us and are now forced towards the negative of the ground. This is electrostatic acceleration. One might think that the attraction from above and below would cancel out completely, but it is the electrostatic gradient that creates a flow from the positive above to the negative below. Think of the earth as a flat strainer and there is a constant flow of water from above moving very slowly, always applying a force in a downward direction. This would be considered a vector. The electrostatic potential difference getting stronger as you rise from the earth will keep a steady pressure from above at all times until it reaches the Gaussian surface above. When we reverse the polarity of the electric field and put a negative surface above a positive one, we can reverse this electrostatic phenomenon and get things to stick to the upper plate as if it were the ground. This works with all types of matter. You can move wood, iron filings, and even human hair with these forces. Believe it or not, you can even get water to bend. If the vector lines created between the two Gaussian surfaces are curved, all the matter will follow these field lines as well. In this demonstration, instead of using a flat plane, I use two circular objects as my Gaussian surfaces. You can see that as the water settles after being sloshed around by me turning the wheel on the Van de Graaff generator, it comes to rest with a curve in the surface following the electric field lines between the two spheres. This is why the ionosphere, a phenomenon that has never been created in a lab, is a theory yet to be verified, but is needed to create this phenomenon here on Earth. Maxwell himself changed Ampere's law, which stated plainly that without matter, no electrostatic field can exist. Maxwell changed it with no scientific evidence, allowing it to gather magically above our heads in free space. Density and electric potential go hand in hand. The denser something is, the more electric potential it can hold. Not that I believe in the model of the atom, but even the periodic table has a distinction on the amount of electric potential there is in the different elements. In this demonstration, I have a metal button hanging from helium balloons that keep the button buoyant just above the ground. By only adding more electrostatic potential to the button, you can see it will appear heavier and force the buoyant object down along the vector lines created by the electrostatic potential difference. Without changing the density of the medium or the object, one can change the overall weight or gravitas of the object. To do an actual experiment on the topic of gravitation, this variable of electrostatic acceleration must be taken into account at all times. Now we will take a look at how different electric potentials of gases act in this electrostatic medium we live in. Gases have different electric potentials, just like all matter does. 
The gas molecules that can hold more potential than those gas molecules around them are theoretically more dense and will have a stronger attraction towards the negative ground below. When these gases are carried along the downward vector by these electrostatic forces, the lighter gas gets displaced and becomes buoyant until it finds a place with the same electrostatic potential. This is why we have a pressure density gradient and are told the noble gases work their way up into the higher elevations and collect in layers above. This has not been verified by anyone I know, so at this point I cannot say if this is true or not. Through this induction, some pretty amazing things happen when large electric potential differences are applied to gases. When gases are placed into an area with a strong electric potential difference, we get the phenomenon known as ionic wind. If a person were to charge themselves up with one million volts of static electricity, they could blow out a candle almost two feet away from the gases rushing away from their fingertip because of the exceptional potential difference. We do know that when a gas loses its electric potential, it slows down so much that it turns into a liquid, like the condensation that forms on a window when it's cold outside. The gases hit the cold window and transfer their potential energy to it, trying to mediate the temperature. In doing so, the gases lose their electric potential and turn into a liquid. Down here near the surface, the system is very dynamic, with all the plants and animals breathing, low altitude weather patterns constantly cycling, and earth releasing gases from the deep at all times. We will never see all the gases lose their potential and turn into a liquid anytime soon, I hope. Now we will get to the incoherent part of the phrase. It is called incoherent because it is not completely polarized, like a magnet, but only slightly on its surface through electrostatic induction. A magnet with all of its potential stored on opposite sides would be considered coherent. Now these forces are very weak and only apply a slight pressure along the vector they create. All other pressure mediations such as buoyancy, atmospheric pressure, and temperature are certainly stronger. But nonetheless, these weak electrostatic forces are ever-present in the world around us, and I fear the day they may come to an end. Again, I fully understand people's reluctancy to use the word gravity when speaking of this place we live. So instead, let's call it what it really is incoherent electrostatic acceleration. Let's teach those just finding out the nature of this world in which we live the correct way. The fact that we live in an electric realm with a static electric field you yourself can go out and measure tells us without a doubt that these well understood laws of electricity create the downward bias phenomena we witness all across the plane. Instead of using the word gravitation, I ask you to educate yourself further on incoherent electrostatic acceleration. This is Good Times for All here, signing out. As always, thanks for watching.